What happens if my slip and fall accident occurred at my place of employment? If you get injured at work, you have both what we call a worker's compensation claim and a so-called third-party claim. What you would do is you would first process your case through the worker's compensation system, uh, where you would be paid for your lost wages and your medical uh, bills. And secondly, you would then prosecute a claim against the third party. That is the entity which caused you injury. So let's say, for instance, you're working for a company and they lease the building from another company. Uh, you would have a cause of action against the owner of that building uh, because uh, they're responsible for maintaining that building in a safe fashion. So if there was something on the stairs or there was snow and ice but hadn't been properly removed, you'd be able to go against uh, the owner of the building. So what would happen in, those, in that circumstance is that if you recovered under your workers' compensation claim, any monies you recovered by the third party carrier would be paid back to the workers' compensation carrier. How will the business owner and their insurance company fight my claim? Well, they'll fight it uh, very hard. They will be very, very aggressive and not wanting to pay you any money. Well, slip and fall cases are not easy cases. They're very difficult cases to prosecute on, on a person's behalf. Uh, most of these cases are our, what they call a 50-50 case. That is, uh, uh, if, if you, on your best day, you're going to get a 50% win in 100% in of your cases. but. Uh, the majority of these cases, at least in Massachusetts, uh, usually seven out of ten times these cases are tried, it's a case, uh, it's a verdict for the defendant or the insurance company. So they're very hard to prove because jurors generally don't like to give money away for what they perceive as something that you could have uh, prevented. Uh, sidewalk cases, for instance. Uh, we all know that sidewalks aren't perfect. There's going to be little nicks in the sidewalk. There's going to be some level of elevation and so forth. Uh, people kind of look at that and say, well, that's kind of life in the fast lane, if you will. Uh, however, there are instances where uh, very often, uh, because of the negligent maintenance of the premises by the company owner or the business owner or the property owner, you will be entitled to recover for your injuries. What damages can I recover after a slip and fall accident? Your damages include your lost wages the medical bills that you've incurred as a result of the treatment that you need, the pain and suffering you have endured, as well as what we call the loss of enjoyment of life. In other words, how this injury has negatively impacted you. So for instance, if you're unable to work, you'll get your wages back. All the medical bills that you incur will probably be paid for, at least in the beginning part, by your own health care carrier. And then the healthcare carrier will have a lien on your uh, settlement proceeds or any verdict you may receive from a jury. And you have to pay back the, uh, the lien holder, that is the healthcare carrier. The third thing you recover for is what we call the uh, pain and suffering you've endured, endured. That's not easily quantified, but uh, there are many ways we can uh, suggest to a jury that an, a reasonable verdict will compensate you for the loss, uh, for you, the pain and suffering you've endured. And the, finally, the last recovery in Massachusetts, which is allowed, is the, um, loss of, uh, the uh, loss of enjoyment of life. In other words, how this has impacted you. The fact that you can't get out and go to the store, or you have difficulty getting dressed in the morning, or you have difficulty reaching up into the cupboard just to get a glass out because your, the back pain is so severe. There are many instances like this where you will be able to recover for the loss of enjoyment of life. Will I have to go to court and testify in order to settle my case? That's a question that so many people ask because most people are absolutely petrified to go to court. It's not something you cherish, obviously. Uh, but the chances are you will have to go to court, and you, or at least at the very least, you have to be prepared to go to court. In other words, if an insurance company believes that you are not ready, willing, and able to take your case to a jury, they will not offer you any kind of a reasonable settlement because ultimately that is the form, that is the court of law, is the form in which we decide these cases. So you have to have two things, the, the fortitude and the determination to go to court, which is not easy for many people, and you have to have an attorney who's willing to take this case to court and try it uh, to a jury verdict and try it successfully on your behalf. I will tell you that in most cases, uh, that are properly prepared, most of these cases settle before you get to court. Most of them, uh, many of them settle at the time that we get literally to the courthouse steps or oftentimes we're actually impaneling a jury. We're putting a jury into the jury box 
and then the insurance company attorney will oftentimes come up and say, we'd like to discuss settlement with you. Uh, but until you get to that point, they're not going to settle the case for any kind of reasonable value. Should I contact the property owner's insurance company directly? That's not a really a very good idea. I think contacting the property owner's insurance carrier will allow them to ask you many, many questions. Many, much of this information will be foreign to you. Uh, they'll ask a question in such a way that the answer you give could be ambiguous and that will later come back to haunt you uh, in the t at the time of uh, either settlement or trial of the matter. So I strongly urge people not to engage with the insurance company if they can avoid that and to rather contact an attorney and have a professional individual such as the attorney handle the case for you properly. Should I accept the property owner's offer to pay my medical bills? No. Uh, we will eventually uh, accept money from the insurance company that will pay your medical bills. But uh, oftentimes, if a property owner steps forward and says, I'll pay your medical bills, they'll want you to sign a release and you'll be signing away any rights you may have to uh, recover for the other items that you're entitled to recover to, as I mentioned earlier, such as pain and suffering and loss of enjoyment of life. So uh, you do not want to limit your recovery simply to medical bills inadvertently or unknowingly. So my suggestion is that's not a very good idea. Thanks for watching part three of Slip and Fall Answers. If you have specific questions for Attorney Brady regarding your case, give our office a call at 508-660-8888.